So I hate holding anybody up. And can we agree, by the way, between me and the odd, say, 300 odd of you, that the people who hold you up at the airport, the people who only get their belongings in order <laughs> when they are at and not before the x-ray machines in the airport, should be executed. Those people should execute. Yeah? Do you know? Oh, do I have to take off my coat and my belt? Do I have to, and, and uh, even though everybody else has clearly been taking off their coat and their belt before me, and there's a sign saying, please take off your coat and your belt, and a speaker going, please take off your coat and your belt. Do I have to take off the coat and the belt, or am I special? <laughs> That'd be me. Just <laughs> double tap to the back of the head, no fucking around, step over their body on the way to Tara Molina. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't even shoot them. I'd smother them with the clear plastic bag they have so willfully ignored. Now, so bear that in mind, I hate holding anybody up. This is what happened. I was driving onto a beach a while ago and they allow you to park on the beach. But the road onto the beach is quite narrow, but you can always find your way on. So I parked on the beach and went for a little walk, came back, and as I got there, there's all these cars suddenly had parked on the right-hand side of the road to the beach. So suddenly it was only wide enough for me to get off my car and I went, oh God, I'm gonna get stuck in the deep sand. Got stuck in the deep sand. Now, this wasn't a, a rural beach. Do you know the way those, you have lovely rural beaches, isolated out in Kerry and in Donegal, you meet a local, where's the best beach in all of the county? Oh, Jesus, is the best beach in the whole county. It is very isolated. It can only be reached by catapult. You know? <laughs> by the way, I'm not, I'm not slagging off Kerry. I genuinely love Kerry because there's a bit of madness in Kerry. I love the pubs, you know? Go into a pub, you see some loud, out loud at the bar, he's 100, 200 years old, he's smoking a pipe made out of his own leg. One of those lads. You know, to tell you about the time he met a mermaid. Those lads. You know, Jesus, a fairly unusual day. Now the day we saw the mermaid. Fairly unusual, because we weren't that far out at sea when we saw the mermaid. Uh, well, we weren't out at sea at all. We were in a Tesco. We were in a Tesco. She was beautiful. She was in the, in the fish finger section, just staring at them. With a far away look on her eye, but oh God, but she wasn't, she wasn't that, that half a fish and that half a woman, or vice versa. She was divided vertically down the middle, like a Blackburn Rovers jersey. To, to the extent if you were walked up to her from the east, you'd think, Jesus, that is a supermodel. But if you walked up to her from the west, you'd think, that is the biggest fucking salmon I have ever seen in my life. Not that you'd say the word west to her, because that was the surname of the man who canned her father. John and not Fred, by the way. So I went up to her and I said, what is your name and how did you get here? And she said, Annette, as the answer to both of those questions. So it wasn't a rural beach. It was Dolly Man Strand in Dublin. I blocked access to Dolly Man Strand in Dublin on the hottest day of the year a couple of years ago. And the dubs went mad. Get off the beach, you cool G fucking brick, will you? I'm stuck, I can't move the car, right? And I thought, okay, if the guy beside me can move his car off the verge, at least people can get off the beach, right? So I knocked in the window, his, he buzzed it down, and he was buckled at two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> Hammered, little fella, no teeth. Here, 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 yeah. Little brown, weather-beaten, ginger kind of face, like someone had put a denim jacket on a raisin. <laughs> Are you stuck in the sand, are you? I am, yeah. Can you move your car? Oh, I can't, sure. How did you get here? And you see, it starts all over me. She's still walking on the beach. Can you ring her? Well, I, when I see you were stuck in the sand, I tried to ring her mobile. And do you know what happened? The glove compartment vibrated three times. So you know what that means? Her phone is in the glove compartment. Oh, yeah, that's what people that means. Well, help me push the car if you want. He opens the passenger door, falls onto the ground because he's buckled, pops back up again because he's buckled and he's not injured. Well, help me push the car. And I turn on the car and he walks around and my parking sensor goes boop, boop, boop. And he pushes it and it goes boop. And he thought he died. <laughs> I could see him in the rear view mirror like, uh... <laughs> It's not me anyway. Check ourselves, you might be dead. He doesn't move the car. These two lads come up. I'm guessing they were Polish, they had a Polish registered car and they had Eastern European uh, names. And they walked up, two lads, lovely fellas. And they said, we'll help you, right? But then they had a row. <laughs> this is front wheel drive, we should uh, push uh, backwards. No, this is rear wheel drive, we should push forward. Why the one he push from the front and one he push from the back? 
<laughs> the three of them are now taking a piss out of me, right? And one of the lads says, you need to put something under the tires for you to get grip. I said, brilliant, I'll grab his arms, you grab his legs, and we'll put him on the front of the car. Try and push the car, doesn't move, doesn't move. And then I hear this, dude, my dude. The guy gets out of a Land Rover, right? Brand new Land Rover. He's got chinos on, the red. He's got deck shoes, he's got a Leinster rugby jersey. The collar is up. Now, from our friends outside of Ireland in where I come from, we call them <laughs> Right? But. <laughs> But the guy who gets out with the Land Rover is a lovely man. He goes, dude, I'll tell you back onto the firmer sand, okay? I'll tell you back firmer on, okay? I can't push you off, but I can tell you back. So he ties a tow rope to my car and he takes a strain. He's like, hey, boom, snaps. He walks over to my window and goes, dude, I've done this loads of times before and it's never snapped the tow rope of my car. I wonder why. I said, I have no idea, Sebastian. I have no idea. As I maintained eye contact with him and slowly, surreptitiously took off the handbrake. <laughs> of my car. He attached another tow rope and he pulled me back off to safety and everybody else drove off the beach. So I'm now on the beach, right? Uh, but I can't drive through the sand I've just been pulled out of. So I wait for another 25 minutes and then I, I'm late. So I went up to the original guy and I said, listen, I'll go and get your sister because you need to move the car, right? What does your sister look like? What my sister look like? Every says she looks like me da. I don't know what your da looks like. I don't know what my da looks like. My sister's medium height, medium brown hair, medium build, no distinguishing features whatsoever. Best I look, I went out. In fairness to him, everybody looked like her. Everybody, men, women, children, cloud formation, seaweed on the shore, couldn't find her. 25 minutes, right? Went back and sat in my car. And I was now an hour and a half late. And eventually his sister walked back around the corner. And in fairness to him, he looked, she looked exactly like he said. Medium white, medium brown hair, no distinguishing features whatsoever. She did have four huskies with her. That he neglected to mention. How could I be expected to find her walking four huskies in Ireland's well-known Alaskan Inuit quarter? And I said to him, I said, if you told me your sister had four huskies, I could be home by now. And he went, no, they can only pull sleds.